Let's take a look at Chapter 8, External Direct Products. The definition in your textbook is what I have written first. It says, let G1, G2, and so forth be finite collection of groups. The external direct product of those groups, written as G1, and then you can see that our textbook uses the basically a plus sign with a circle around it. Um, G2, external direct product with G3, and so on, is the set of all n tuples for which the ith component is an element of gi and the operation is component wise. I don't love that definition, so let's just look at a, an external direct product of two groups just so we can make sure this is very clear. So we have two groups, there's no restriction in the groups, they can be finite, infinite, abelian, non abelian, and so forth. The external direct product, which again our textbook is going to use this notation. Um, but you might also see this as G1 cross G2, like you would for a Cartesian product, because that's essentially what it is, is basically going to be an ordered pair or an ordered triple. And that's what it means when it says n tuples. It's saying that's how many elements you're going to have, where obviously the first element comes from the first group, the second element from the second group, and so forth. The important thing here to understand is that the group operation um, will be component wise. And what that means is the first element is going to use the group operation of the first group. And the second element is going to use the group operation of the second group and so on and so forth. The identity element would be the identity element from the first group, comma, the identity from the second group and so on and so forth. And the order of our new group which is the external direct product group, is just the product of the orders of the groups. Let's start by looking at the external direct product of U8 and U10. So if you'll recall, U8 is all of the elements that are less than eight and relatively prime to eight. So one, three, five, seven. In the same way, if I look at U10, all of the elements less than 10, relatively prime to 10, 1, 3, 7, 9. So each of those has four elements. So the order of U8 is four and the order of U10 is four. So the order of the external direct product of U8 and U10 is four times four, which is 16. So that tells me there's going to be 16 elements in my set. What are the elements? Well, let's just plug and chug. The um, definition tells us that U8, the external direct product of U8 and U10 is the ordered pairs created by taking an element from U8 and an element from U10. So I can start with using the one from U8. So that would be one, 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 three, one seven and one nine. So notice the one, three, seven, and nine, that my second element, those are the elements of U10. And then I can continue using three. So I'm just gonna write it underneath so it's very orderly. Three, one, three, 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 seven, and three, nine. And then I'm going to go to another element, say five. So five one, five three, five seven, five nine, and then lastly use the seven. So seven one, seven three, seven seven, and seven nine. And note there are in fact 16 elements. Underneath I have written, is this group abelian? So a lot of what we're going to talk about in this chapter is going to talk about which groups are isomorphic to which other groups. So we've just finished not too long ago talking about what is an isomorphism. So it's going to come back uh, full bore in this section. But one thing we would want to talk about then, of course, is, is the group abelian. So is this group abelian? Well, we don't know much about external direct products yet. But one of the properties says that if you have 
a, an external direct product of abelian groups, then the external direct product is in fact abelian. But if even one of the elements that make up your external direct product is non-abelian, then the whole direct product is non-abelian. So in this case, is U8 abelian? Yes, you can multiply in any order, mod 8, and get the same result. Um, is it is U10? Yes, it's the same. So is this group abelian? Yes, it's abelian. Now, we're not done here. Uh, one thing I did want to talk about is when you find um, the product of two elements in the set, because this is a group. So if you'll remember, when we talked about groups, we talked about all of the properties, we talked about associativity, we talked about closure, and so forth. So I want to make sure we understand how to find an element um, using the group operation, which is component-wise. So for instance, let's take two elements. I'll take 3, 1, and I'll take 5, 7. Oops. Now what happens when I find the product of these? Well, again, this is a situation where we use product. Sometimes it's going to be addition. Sometimes it's going to be multiplication. In this case, what's going to happen is you're going to get 3 times 5, but this is going to be mod 8, and you're going to get 1 times 7, and that's going to be mod 10. So what happens when I get that? Well, 3 times 5 is 15, 15 mod 8 is 7, and then 1 times 7 is 7 mod 10. So my result would be 7, 7. So again, I haven't proved closure or anything like that. How would I prove closure? I'd have to make a giant Cayley table, which we're not going to take the time to do. But again, I wanted to point out the important fact that the first group had the operation of multiplication mod 8, and the second group had the operation of multiplication mod 10. So when we're doing the um, product of any two elements, we have to keep those operations. Let's take a look at another example, the external direct product of Z2 and Z3. So remember Z2 has order 2, it's just made up of the element 0 and 1, under the operation of addition mod 2, and Z3 is 0, 1, and 2, again, under addition mod 3. So notice both are addition, both different mods, just like our last example. So what is the order of this external direct product? Well, 2 times 3, which is 6. I did point out that you might, in other textbooks, see it written in a different way. These mean the exact same thing. So what are the elements of the group? Well, the elements of the group would be 0 and then 0, and 0 and 1, and 0 and 2, and then, of course, starting with 1. So 1 and 0, 1 and 1, 1 and 2. Those are the elements. The question is, is this group isomorphic to Z6? So I've written a couple of reminders of Z6. Z6 is just 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, under the operation of addition mod 6. So what do I know about that? Z is cyclic. It is generated by both 1 and by 5. And I've also included the cycle structure, which I'm not sure that we've talked about in this class, but if I look at um, the element of 1, the element of 1 has order 6, and the element of 2 has order 3, and the element of 3 has order 2, and the element of 4 has order 3, the element of 5 has order 6, uh, oh, and the element of 0 had order 1. So when we look at cycle structure written like this, it just means there's one element of order 1, one element of order 2, two elements of order 3, none of 4 or 5, and two of 6. So it helps when you're looking at if things are isomorphic, because obviously isomorphisms have the same number of elements, the same structure, and so forth. Uh, one of the main things, of course, is that Z6 is cyclic.
So the question is, is Z2 cross Z3 cyclic? How do I know? How can I figure that out? Well, let's think about generators of Z2 and Z3 and see if we can determine if a Cartesian product made up of those two generators would generate our external direct product. So what is a generator of Z2? Our generator would be one. What's a generator of Z3? A generator would be one. So my question is, what happens if I generate with one, one? Well, obviously my first element would be one, one. Now, what is my operation here? Well, my operation for my first element is addition mod two and then addition mod three. So if I add one, one and one, one, I would get two, two, but it's not two, two because the first one is addition mod two. So this is zero, two. Okay, so now zero, two plus one, one, oops, zero, two plus one, one gives me one, three. But again, it's not one, three. I keep messing this up. I'm sorry. Shoo. But it's not one, three. It's one, zero because three mod three is zero. And then if I add one, one to that again, I get two, one. And if I add, oops, just kidding, not two, one. That's zero, one because it's mod two. And then if I add one, one to that again, I get one, two. And if I add one, one to that again, I get one plus one, which is two or zero and two plus one, which is three, which is zero. So I can see that the order of one, one is six and that it has in fact generated all of the elements of the group. So is Z2 cross Z3 cyclic? Yes, it is. I've just shown that that's generated by one, one. Um, is Z6 cyclic? Yes. Again, do I have a generator? Yes. Um, I could continue to check those examples, but typically if I know that I've got the same number of elements, I know they're both cyclic, then yes, they are going to be isomorphic. Let's do the same with Z2, um, the external direct product of Z2 with itself. So the order of the elements, the order of the number of elements is going to be two times two, which is four. So my actual group is going to be zero, 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 one, one, zero, and one, one. So the question is, is this isomorphic to Z4? So should I just say yes, because we just did one and it was the same? Two times two is four. That's what we did on the last example. Well, let's take a look. Again, I've given you the information that I know about Z4, um, but let's take a look at the elements of Z2 cross Z2. So my question is, is this going to be a cyclic group? Because if it's cyclic and Z4 is cyclic, they're going to be isomorphic. So how do I know? I could, one strategy is to create a Cayley table. So zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one, zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. Whoops. Now this one's a little bit easier to create a Cayley table because it's the same Z2 and Z2, which means we're looking at addition mod two. So what are the elements? This is zero, 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 one, because obviously zero, zero is the identity that makes that first row and first column super easy to figure out. Nope. And now let's take a look at zero, one and zero, one. So that would be zero, two, which obviously mod two would be zero. And then I have one, one. And then I would have one, two, which is actually one, zero. And then continuing on, I would have one, one. I would have two, zero, which would be zero, zero. And I would have two, one, which would be zero, one. And then I would get zero, two, which is zero, zero. And then I would get two, which is zero, one. 
and then I would get 2, which is 0, 2, which is 0. So why did I make a Cayley table? Well, let's take a look at what happened right here. This shows me that every element is its own inverse. And if every element is its own inverse, then that means every element has order 2. If every element has order 2, is this group cyclic? Not cyclic. And if it's not cyclic, can it be isomorphic to Z4, which is cyclic? No, it cannot be. They do not have the same structure. We're going to finish up with a couple of properties of external direct products. The first says the order of an element in an external direct product of a finite number of finite groups is the least common multiple of the orders of the components of the elements. So let's look at the example that we just did in Z2 cross Z3, which gave us an order of six for the element one one. So that generated the entire set. So we already know the order is six, but we can also determine that by finding the order of one in Z2. And if you'll recall, the order of one in Z2 was two because it generated all of Z2. And the order of one in Z3, which was three, and the least common multiple of two and three is six. So that's another way we can determine that. Another property says let G and H be finite cyclic groups then the external direct product of G and H is cyclic if and only if the order of G and the order of H are relatively prime. Now we just looked at that with Z2, with the external direct product of Z2 and Z3, two and three are relatively prime and those did create a cyclic group, whereas Z2, the external direct product of Z2 and Z2 did not create a cyclic group. The last property has to do with isomorphisms in Z sub n. So what this property is saying in English is saying if you have two values that are relatively prime, then you can um, find an isomorphism in Z sub n. So for instance, two and three are relatively prime. And we spoke before about how that's isomorphic to Z6. Now, if you look at Z2 with Z2, Z3, Z5, you're looking at that external direct product. I can say that this is isomorphic to, notice two and three are relatively prime. So Z2, Z6, Z5. So again, taking the two and the three. Three and five are relatively prime. So I could say it's isomorphic to Z2 cross Z2 cross Z15. Um, two and five are relatively prime, two and three are relatively prime. So I can say this is isomorphic to Z6 cross Z10. And I could even say that it's isomorphic to Z2 cross Z30. But what I cannot say is that it's isomorphic to Z60, because again, two and 30 wouldn't be relatively prime, six and 10 wouldn't be relatively prime, and so forth. We're going to finish up chapter eight by taking a look at the U groups or the unit groups modulo N as external direct products.